Hi everyone, um, a little bit sick today, so um, I wasn't thinking originally to make a video, but you know, sitting around the house. <coughs> so I thought I'd go into one question that has come up a lot, and I've tried to stay away from it, um, and that is how I got into Buddhism and ultimately became a monk. But I think, yeah, it's probably worth... Uh, explaining or getting getting over because there's a lot of people wondering who I am um, whether they can um, whether they can trust the things I say and so on wondering where I'm coming from what my background is <coughs> so uh, how I got in interested in Buddhism uh, I think actually relates to when I was young I was one of those people who um, I think among many people who had a keen um, interest in 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 the, these big questions like why uh, why do we all have to die and 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 what is the meaning of life <coughs> and trying to find a way of living that uh, has more meaning than just living for the sake of living or or or, or just to get by. I remember, um, you know, thinking about my family and all, and uh, just just realizing one day when I was about eight um, that you know everyone in my family is going to die, that all the people I knew are going to die, that this is a fact of life, and it it hit me really quite profoundly, and it was something that you know posed questions in my mind: why, or or what what do we do about this? There's nothing we can do. It was a sense of hopelessness. And uh, I started getting this this idea that that um, th th my understanding of of life was that we you know we we go to school to get a job to get uh, mon to collect money to get old to, to or to retire and by the time we retire we're old and uh, we've we've lived most of our life out and 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 haven't gained anything from it so um, even when I was young when I was I think maybe eleven or twelve. I was really set in this idea that you know, the, the the ordinary way of living was meaningless, and I had to do something to uh, find a way out. <clears throat> and so I started um, looking into things like meditation. When uh, I, I was practicing martial arts, and I remember incorporating meditation into it. When I started doing a little bit of teaching martial arts, I would teach people meditation as well, and people really liked it, and I thought it was great. Um, and I was would practice meditation at home, even lying down in bed. I would uh, enter into these states of, um, of 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 intense concentration, and and um, you know it was something that was always with me, <coughs> even from that from that time. Um, and then someone handed me in school the the Tao Te Ching, which was a um, a very important book for me for most of my teenage years. It was um, it was sort of what set me on this path. I instantly, reading this book, I in, was instantly converted and thought, you know, I'm a Taoist. And from then on, I, when people asked, I said I was a Taoist and this is what I believed in. And, and, and this is what, what resonated with me was this teaching in the Tao Te Ching. So I, I tried to get through high school and, and did really well, but hated it, and asked repeatedly to, to, to leave school, to be taken out of school. Through public school, I had been homeschooled, and it was only in high school that we went back, and it was a, just wasn't doing it for me. I said, this isn't the way to live our lives. This isn't t for any purpose except getting into this wheel of uh, samsara. <coughs> And uh, so my parents moved me to an alternative school and then another alternative school and finally I finished high school um, and went on to university. And then in university I decided that I'd had enough and I dropped out of my first year of university. And you know there was a lot of stuff going on here. I wasn't at all spiritual. I was getting caught up in the teenage years and, and uh, um, hedonism, drugs, sex, rock and roll, all of the these uh, things that are supposed to bring happiness and they were making me miserable and I remember this was a terrible period of my life and it just built up and built up to the point where after, in university I said that's it and I, I withdrew and tried to go find a place to go <coughs> find, find a way um, to uh, some sort of spiritual path to follow uh, I was thinking of going to Central America to, to do all the 
these crazy hallucinogenic drugs and the, the with the shamans and so on. Uh, I was still sort of in that mode and and uh, a little bit a little bit lost. Didn't know where to go. But people kept pushing me to go to Thailand. There was you know this person would talk about Thailand, that person would talk about Thailand until finally. One of my climbing, my rock climbing uh, friends suggested that we go there to do some rock climbing. Um, so I took him up on that, thinking, you know, this will give me a chance to practice, to follow Taoism, to follow the, these Taoist teachings. I'll, from Thailand, I'll make a trip to China or Japan, maybe get into some Zen or something. Try to find some place. And I was joking with people that I would, you know, my intention was to become a monk, but, you know, I never really took it seriously. Um, I, I was looking for something, and I, you know, I thought, I'll, I'll find the truth. I'll find some, um, some spiritual path. When I got to Thailand, um, it, it wasn't really what I, 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 ex I had hoped for, and I wasn't really even looking in Thailand. I, I wasn't interested in Buddhism actually at all, uh, except maybe Zen Buddhism. I was more interested in Taoism, and I was thinking about going to China. So I spent some time looking around and reading up on on what's going on in China and where I could find. Um, some kind of Taoist teachings and I didn't have much luck but I bought a ticket to go to China I uh, got my visa already and I was ready to go and then finally it just kind of hit me that you know China's probably um, not going to be the most spiritual places it's a communist country at the time it wasn't yet um, even openly Buddhist it was uh, a pretty it was a pretty scary I, scary thing to, to you know, just go into China not knowing anyone. So I changed my mind and went to meditate in Thailand, which, tur which turned out to be, uh, I think, the right choice. Uh, it, it helped me to understand what the Buddha, what is Buddhism, because, you know, when you read about Buddhism, often it's, you know, people talking about suffering, and, and uh, that seems quite dry and dull and boring, um, especially sometimes the way it's presented. Um, but when I went to meditate and, and, you know, started actually practicing instead of just reading and theorizing and, 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 think, and, and thinking about it, it really helped me to understand what was this thing I was looking for, this, this um, you know, talking about wisdom. And, you know, it kind of seemed in the beginning that wisdom would be something that you'd talk about and you'd, you'd just get it. Um, but now, once I started meditating, wisdom became something that you, you understand, you, you, you realize for yourself through experience through through seeing for yourself so I spent a month there meditating and that changed my life I would say that's probably um, the most important thing I've ever done um, <clears throat> and then I went back I was you know it was it was kind of 50 50 should I stay should I go and someone suggested I should go back and get my education if my parents wanted me to so I followed that advice and went back and spent the next two years. This is where you get into where I, you know, my becoming a monk. So I'm just talking about my background, but uh, you know, I, I want you to understand that it's it's a little bit convoluted. You may not become a monk in in exactly this way because it took me two years to get my parents, um, you know, almost um, consent. Uh, in Buddhism, we have this rule that if you're going to become a monk, your parents have to agree on it. And it's a useful rule because it's very difficult to meditate if you have problems with the people that are close to you. Um, so I spent two years trying to um, get to the point where I'd be able to ordain. I think in the beginning it wasn't really the, the, the major goal, but as I studied and as I, I, I meditated more and, and learned more about what the Buddha taught, it just seemed like the right way to go. It seemed like the 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 answer, the the um, the next step. So <clears throat> I spent time learning about how to become, you know, what was the life of a monk and what are the roles of the monk. Um, and uh, I spent most of those two years actually in a Buddhist monastery in Canada. I was quite um, fortunate to be able to <clears throat> stay at a Buddhist monastery while I was going to school. So instead of renting an apartment, getting a job, whatever, I had no money, I went to a, a Cambodian Buddhist monastery, this little church that they had bought uh, and started a Buddhist monastery, and asked them if I could stay there. And they were, you know, kind of like, he, the abbot said to me, it's, it said, it's okay. And I, I learned after staying with him from 
from him that it's okay really means um, no, we'd rather that you don't. But but it was his way of politely saying um, probably not a good idea. But I was stubborn and he let me, and we ended up getting along really well. And he's now one of my very good friends, even though we've kind of lost touch. But I stayed with him there, went to school, and kept eight eight the eight Buddhist precepts. I wouldn't eat in the evening, so I was at university all day, and I would only eat in the morning. Um, I didn't have a job, so I would you know just get by. Where there was a few days where I you know didn't have any food to eat. It was a really a hard life, but it, I felt like it was a training for me. So. Um, I think in that sense, um, it, it's important to point out that um, you know sometimes it, it 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 helps to prepare yourself. This is why they often suggest people to go and stay at a monastery for a year or so. I kind of did this before I went to ordain. I I, I was not really in a, a re real monastic situation, but um, you know I was li kind of living the life, keeping m some of the monks' rules. In fact. I tried to keep as many of the monks' rules as I could, even not as a monk. Um, but finally it became too much, and I decided that, that school wasn't going to work for me. And um, so I went back to Thailand, ordained as a monk. Um, and the only, the only way I could manage to ordain as a monk is if I promised my parents that I would come back and continue to learn. I said, don't worry, I'll, I'll become a monk, but I'll still come back and study. So... Um, so I did. I became a monk, and then in the middle of the winter, I came, went back to Canada, and uh, went back to school as a monk. And um, unsurprisingly, that didn't last long. I wasn't into it. Um, I, I had kind of had enough of school. Well, I'd had enough of school many years ago, actually. But it was sort of an agreement that I'd had with my father that I'd go back to school. And uh, so in the end, I broke the agreement. I said, uh, I can't do it. It's not going to work. I have to, uh, have to follow my, my way. And so I left, um, did about a half a year of school, hung out for a while, did some stuff at the monastery, helped these novices, um, <coughs> and then went back to, to Thailand. That's my story on how I became a monk. Um, the actual ordination p procedure was uh, there's not much to say um, i th I think you know what's important here is the path that leads up to it getting your life in order if you if you're this kind of person who b believes in 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 these sorts of things uh, you know that this is the um, the the way out the this is the path that has real meaning and and uh, benefit and uh, purpose then um, you know do some meditation start start on the course don't just say okay I'm gonna go ordain as a monk I would say these people don't tend to make it very far if that's how you're starting out your spiritual life you're you're probably just going to to uh, give up and get frustrated and go home because you're not really ready for it it's a big step um, for me it was two years of meditation, study, and and just generally living the monastic life, um, and so if you can do that first, I think you'll be greatly benefited. When I when I decide when I the day came to be ordained, there were um, eighteen of us who ordained, and uh, I'm the only one left. They all, most of them, disrobed within a week. Um, that's standard. But even the ones who had decided to stay on never made it. There were three other, uh, two other Westerners, and fifteen Thai people, and um, they've they've all disrobed. Um, and you know, I I felt ready for it. For me, it wasn't a big deal. It was, um, well, it, it it felt great. It was like a final release. And yes, I've made it. But uh, as for a change in lifestyle, it didn't change much. And there were a bunch more rules that I had to keep, but other than that. You know, I, I had already really prepared myself for it. Um, that's my story. That's the first half of my story. The second half gets even crazier um, after I became a monk. But nobody's asked that question yet. So um, uh, that's an answer to your question. How did I become a monk? I hope that covers the, the, 
the uh, doubts that were in your mind or that answers your question uh, as you would have it answered. Okay, thanks, and uh, talk to you soon.